very far. Okay, welcome everybody to our delayed book club discussion on um, Amor Tolls' The Lincoln Highway from 2021. Thank you everyone for coming, first of all. And, um, and second of all, I know that I think we kind of all wanna sort of get into talking about it. That's what we were just saying before starting the recording. Um, except for maybe Carol, because Carol, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, is not the bear. Well, you didn't even like the gentleman in Moscow, did you? No, that's right. Did you no. finish reading? Did you finish reading it? I couldn't. Well, you stopped midway through. Okay. So, uh, Lincoln Highway is Amor Tolls' third novel. His first was Rules of Civility. His second was A Gentleman in Moscow. Rules of Civility was written in 2000 or published in 2011. A uh, Gentleman in Moscow, 2016. And this one, The Lincoln Highway in 2021. So The Lincoln Highway follows a cast of characters, whereas The Gentleman in Moscow followed one person over the course of like 32 years in one place. Uh, this novel, The Lincoln Highway, follows a cast of, well, we have several points of view, about eight points of view from different characters, and it takes place all in 10 days and does not stay in one place. They're traveling. It's a road trip kind of book. So our quasi-main character is Emmett, Emmett Watson, who is an 18-year-old who has just been released from a juvenile detention center in Kansas, comes home, his dad has died, which he knew, and he's taking care of his little brother. The farm that they've lived on, uh, that they grew up on, has foreclosed, and their next move is going to be to head out west, where Emmett plans, who Emmett is trained as a carpenter, and he plans to start buying and flipping houses. Now, those plans <coughs> go somewhat awry, because as the old joke goes, how do you make God laugh? Make a plan. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the plans go awry when uh, um, they meet up with two of Emmett's former detention center neighbors, Wooly and Duchess, who have stowed away, who had stowed away in the warden's car where the warden dropped Emmett off at home and they have a plan to go to New York City. Anyway, hijinks ensue. Um, I have to say that this book, so you guys know that I read it before. I did a book review on it actually for this group shortly after it came out. I was really excited to read it and I had said that this gives Amor Tolls the hat trick for me. I read Rules of Civility, loved it, Read Gentleman in Moscow, loved it. Read this one, loved it. I reread this one and I would have thought that, well, you know, you may know that I'm a big, I'm a big fan of rereading. Um, I, I was a little bit hesitant, uh, not hesitant, but I was curious if the rereading would do the same. I loved it just as much the second time, just as much, if not more, because, um, when you reread a book, you don't, you're not wondering how it's going to end. You don't know, like, it, it, it's, it's not about the finding out what the, what the ending is. It's, you, you have time to actually admire the scenery. That's kind of how I put it in my head. And it seemed like an appropriate, <laughs> it seemed like an appropriate sort of way of describing this road trip book. So, who wants to start? Yes, Roseanne. Okay, somebody's talking. It was uh, some noise just in the background of Addie's. Oh, um... Okay. The thing is, I, I found what's fascinating is uh, the way the chapters were written backwards. Mm -hmm. Chapter 10, 9, 8. I don't know if this is a, a common thing. I've never seen this before. So mm -hmm. I figured, obviously, the beginning is going to be like the beginning of the end it's like the beginning of the story but it's really the end of the story because the beginning is going to be at the begin at the end I'm not sure exactly why I knew that the other thing is I love the book except that I found it a little long I think that they uh, you know first of all this Emmett seemed so naive and I couldn't understand that because he really didn't 
I mean, these two guys were up to no good. He he had to know that. And he knew a little bit, but he just, he was such a nebbish. They call that a nebbish. Like he just followed along. Okay. He knew they were no good. So that part, that was a little bit, I couldn't understand that part. Why uh, that was a little bit hard to fathom. And I found it too long. It could have been cut shorter because it was, it was just like, oh God, here we go again. They're going to get in trouble again. So, but I did love the book. Okay. I have Katie, feelings. I'm going to save my feelings till I hear from everyone else. Cause you know, I always have feelings. <laughs> Wasn't the name of the chapter, the, the numbers of the chapter, the number of the days. Yeah. yeah. So it's That's a countdown right. from, um, I will say that, uh, in reading the interviews and, um, and stuff with Amor Tolls about this book, one of the things that he said was that he had initially written it like moving forward, but still in the same kind of order, but moving forward, saying like day one, day two, day three, day four. But then it made more sense to him in his mind to organize the story by making it like a countdown. And it's it's a funny countdown too, right? Because one of the things that um, like that comes up in the book, right? Uh, Billy talks about in his compendium of um, Abacus Abernathy's, you know, compendium of heroes. He says, none of the stories start at the beginning, quote unquote, right? They all start in medias race, which is like in the middle of the story. And then like, it's sort of, there's a progression, right? So in a way, this is, this is the same way that this book is written too. It's in medias. It, it doesn't start like with, Emmett's childhood, it doesn't start at the beginning of the journey. It doesn't even end at the end of the journey, right? Because it ends in New York. And whereas in theory, yeah. the final destination here is California. But um, but it's it's the adventure part, right? It's this is the adventure with these four, mostly with these four, following these four people um, on this journey of all kinds of things right self-discovery um to a better life to their future into adulthood into like it's it doesn't start at the beginning and it doesn't end at the end you know but it does the countdown for I don't really I, I didn't understand from the um from the interview that I read where he talks about this why that helped organize his thoughts more he said that he had started off saying day one day two day three and that things started to get unwieldy but then um he also said that he had initially planned on writing the book just from two perspectives two points of view emmets and duchesses and what i found really interesting about it which you probably noticed right is that while there are eight points of view only two of them are written in the first person and that those are duchesses and sallies and neither of those characters is arguably the main character like to me the main characters theoretically would be Emmett and Billy Billy only has a few points of view chapters um Emmett's has more of a bulk but um, it's interesting to me that he's not chosen as having a first person narrative now one of the things that Amar Tolls also said in interviews was the reason why uh, only the two characters have first person narratives is because he thought that like their characters were just more vocal and stronger, like whereas everyone else has kind of a close third person narrative. So we still see everything that they're sort of they're experiencing and thinking, but it made more sense to him to have those as third persons. But I find it interesting, the ones that I like to me, that's not an. I don't want to say adequate response or a sufficient response. It's just that I feel like there's more. And that's something that I also want to want to hear your your perspectives on. I, I just to say, I, I do agree with you. I wanted to know, did they get to California? Did they meet the mother? Like that was like sort of like, you know, uh, like there were things about that. And and what happened with the with the money when they found the money? And like there were a lot of things. And what about Sally's? Did she love Emmett? Did he love 
her. Like there were a lot of things that weren't answered. And, you know, but that to me, like it leaves you wondering, you close the book and you keep thinking about it. Maybe that's the reason that the writer did it, you know? And you know, that's one of the things that I love about literature. I love open-ended things. So (laughs) very very open-ended, very open-ended. Go ahead, I think the reason that he did that, I think the reason he did that is because that was uh, a fantasy. The mother's going to meet them. You're, they're going to find right, the mother in course, California. It's not going to happen. No, She's probably fantasy, gone. Whereas what we, what we saw was real life. Maybe. Right. But then there's the but other he, thing too, right? It seems really fantastical. I entirely agree. And this is Billy. This is from Billy's, like, this is Billy is the one who's making that story sort of move along. Uh, like it, it helps that it's backed up by facts for Emmett, right? Because initially Emmett is thinking about they're going to be transplanted to Texas because of the growth rate of the population. And then when he reads about the population uh, in California, he realizes that's actually a better bet. So it's this sort of fantastical thing. And like, of course, this is ridiculous. It happened eight years ago. Like she left eight years ago. We haven't heard from her at all in eight years. Why would she be there? This is not like a trail of breadcrumbs that have been left. However, a lot of Billy's insights find fruit, right? Like they find purchase. Like his, when he meets Ulysses, what'd you guys think when he met Ulysses? That, that that really that part of Ulysses and on the train and and that horrible preacher and everything that like just came from out of left field like it almost was like a completely different completely different from what we were reading about Duchess and Emmett all of a sudden you've got Ulysses you've got that preacher like it was almost like another book coming into that book I don't know if anybody felt that way so you I didn't like it, it. Agree. I found it was disjointed. Like it was why what it's like a snother book. Did you feel that way too? I wrote that. I don't I I felt about Ulysses that I had to to be quite honest, I like his writing. I liked a lot of the wit. I liked some of the moral uh, aspects he puts out. But I found the book like you, too long, too many people, and yeah. sometimes very confusing. Yeah, a little I really, bit confusing. I really find I have to read it again, if, but I don't know if I can plow through it again. <laughs> That's why I gave up. Thank well, you. I didn't give up. I mean, Thank you. It was, it was a very interesting book. But I, I really like the gentleman in Roscoe. I just love that. You preferred it. And Carol, at what point did you give up? I'm curious. What what was going was a, on in the story? It was a while ago, but also I have to say I did read the end. I agree with everybody; it was too long. And then when I got to, I just couldn't follow all these characters. Not so everybody. I, so I went. I went <laughs> to the end, and you just have to refresh my memory about the end. I think it ended tragically. Obviously, everybody read the book. Mm-hmm. It's not a spoiler alert. So well, yeah, anyone who's to... watching this too has to be aware that it's there are going to be spoilers because oh okay okay because so it's, a, it it's a book club me. it's a book club <laughs> we're talking yeah, about if I okay. want to read it I'll read it if I don't I won't so it doesn't make a difference yeah okay, but I'm just why saying was, why was Ulysses put in there for what reason was Ulysses put in there and the oh, creature the well, feeling... maybe the danger on the train but I, I don't understand the reasoning for those two characters I had the feeling Ulysses was I had the feeling it was a typically American kind of thing and he had to put some black person in there <laughs> Honestly, and then again we never found was, out was just, he, if like, he met his, his wife mean, and child again yeah. that's an open ended uh, you story. know the sh- this is the you know I found a, a number of things were li- really sort of drawn in by their hair to and you see I don't like I mean I loved Ulysses but he didn't have a big role I mean he was just a very warm kind of person and it's the same with the I'm sorry I'm still having I don't have COVID anymore but I'm still sick of it um, it's the same with the the tornado. And the guy ended up, you know, in a coffin. And I thought that was really a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That was like, where, where did this come from, you know? Exactly. I found a lot of things were just sort of put into, I don't know, give an overview of. America. I'm going to tell you my perspective on a couple of these things, and we'll come back, Carol, to the ending of revisiting the ending. So um, I would say, first of all, that Heidi, what you were saying about like maybe Ulysses narrative was just put in um, because it's like a Black American's perspective and whether that was sort of tokenism. I'd say that the same argument could potentially be made for Sally's inclusion. Sally's the only female character Woman. who has right. who has a narrative voice here too. Um, and really like it's just like she's one of two female characters really who have any degree of prominence in it. And the if if you want to stretch it a little bit and say that the librarian Right, um, Ellie. Well, and there's the the, the 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 sister. The, the yeah, mother. yeah, and so, but but this is it. It's like so. Like, does Sally get a point of view just so that there's a woman's perspective, well, and that it can't I say that, that it's just like all male? Interesting, you say that because I think Sally was like, um, why the we don't know why the mother left. We don't, we don't know why, but at the same time, through the descriptions, my my impression of why the mother leaves is she had postpartum. Like mm -hmm. she leaves when um when Billy is a baby. And there's Emmett's description in one section of the book where he talks about how um occasionally he would come to like his mom would leave these tasks undone. And then after Billy's birth, like all sorts of chores just wouldn't even end up getting started. And then with her very much like the way that he describes her it seems very much postpartum so like uh that like any sort of interest that she okay. has was and gone. i and i got the idea that it was it was a balance between probably th that she was not being fulfilled her her father told her to this that she was like that's what she was doing and and that and the mother felt the same way she I, and so that's well, why it was and a, it's quite it was a reflection of why maybe the mother left you know yeah, and Sally. it's quite possible that too, because there's another, I think it's in that same section when Emmett is talking about or is remembering the way life was when his mom was around. And he says um, he he remembers the last night that they were all together, which was July 4th at the fireworks and how at the end, um, like when they go to spread out their picnic and she says, let me, let me do this and help. And then at the end, both he and his dad sort of see this as as like she's thankful that it was like that she was kind of forced to come to remember like what things could be like and everything. But then he says, really, when he wakes up the next morning to find her gone, that it's that she what she was remembering was that there is joy to be had and she wasn't experiencing it. And so that's why she left. These are all like just theories, right, because we don't meet the mom in the first person. But. You know what? I felt that the, the 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 author put it through in so much. He threw in postpartum depression, a certain kind of feminism by Sally being always dead, doing the dishes and making pies, and she had to get away from that. He threw in mental illness with Wooly and his sister. An addiction, under right? He threw Heroin? In an addiction. And, and he threw in maybe like 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 the the black issue, and he threw in uh, it's crooked preachers. Like he just threw in so many parts of life that that maybe he wanted everybody to see all in one book with different characters. So this brings me. Thank you very much. And Rona. teenage people, and teenagers, uh -huh. and rebellion, and and all that kind of business. Yeah. Okay. So um. One of the reasons why it's set in 1954, the author has said, is because it's sort of, it is this sort of cusp moment. It's after the war. It's before sort of the next sort of phases of cultural revolution. It's before Korea. It's before, um, like, really, like, um, a lot of the, like, while civil rights movements have started, they don't really start in earnest until, like, the next year, I believe. I believe mm -hmm. I might be wrong. Um, there's also like the women's lib movement. There's also like, there's there's a lot of stuff that's happening right before and right after right. this. Right. Now, yeah, so to 
sort of circle back a little bit again and say like, so I personally, I think that I'm the odd one out here, but I did not think the book was too long. I thought it was perfect and I would read it again. Mm -hmm. Having read it twice already, I will probably read it again. Um, but um, I think that one of the reasons why he has all of these different characters is to sort of highlight the ways that different lives intersect. And also I think that the reason why he has each of these chosen characters anyway, have a first person or have a point of view chapter, like have things done from their perspectives, including Pastor John, right? So Pastor John is the weirdo. Uh, I, I would say that he's the bad guy. I would disagree with Roseanne sorry, that um, that Duchess and Wooly are bad guys or not up to or not up to any good necessarily, because I think that one of the interesting things about having those four as like the key characters is that they're all from such different backgrounds and from such different perspectives even though Billy and Emmett are from the same family I would say that they have very different perspectives um but then I guess you could set that aside you could set Billy aside and say like with Emmett and Duchess and Wooly right like Emmett grew up poor but like on a farm with a family Yes, his mom left. Yes, his dad was not successful, and but he was loved, and he knew that, and there was support. And Duchess grew up with a charlatan, right, as a father, being dropped off at an orphanage at one point, and like just abandoned for two years, and then picked up again, and sort of like, uh, and then Wooly growing up with wealth and family all around they all somehow come together. And in the same way, I think that that same, like that same thing comes up. It's like our lives intersect with so many different people throughout the course of our lives. And for this little 10 day period, the people that we're focusing on. So we've got Sally's perspective. I, I really, I'm going to come back at some point. Um, Cause I want to, I, I really liked the chapter where she was talking about kindness um, and I wanted to, to sort of poke at that a little bit because this is part of her women's lib thing, right? When, uh, she says to Emmett at one point that saying that she shouldn't have gone to any trouble or she didn't have to do something is not the same as showing gratitude. And it's true, right? He doesn't thank her for the preserves. He doesn't thank her for coming to do breakfast and everything. And part of this from Emmett's perspective is that he doesn't want her to get notions that, um, there's some sort of future for the two of them but for her the whole thing about the old-fashioned sort of things of making preserves of doing things from scratch of doing things the hard way the long way it is showing that kindness and that kindness is something that is unnecessary that's why it's kindness there's no kindness in just doing the things that need to be done there's kindness in doing what's extra and when I read that chapter, and partly it's that it's um, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot in the last few months. So then, like it reading it in black and white was very um, nice for me. Uh, but I thought that was interesting, especially then when taken into account with like her longer storyline with um, the expectations that are placed on women, like in terms of what they have to do and how to care for like the men around or what have you. Anyway, bye, Toby. Bye, Toby. Each character was larger than life. Each character was elevated. Like Billy was so brilliant. I mean, an eight-year-old to do and say and think like he, each character was heightened, I think, from a normal, that trying to make a point about each character. I, I don't know. I felt that. Agreed. And I, I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again that sometimes I do find it a little bit of a cop out to have a precocious quote unquote right. child in the, in the narrative, because as you guys know, I have a nine-year-old. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I don't think he was precocious. He was autistic. He, had, well, he was on the spectrum. But that's not like, that's not just one thing either, right? It's like, it's just approaches. like that his insights is okay. So his insights with Ulysses, for example, and then like why I think that Ulysses, I'll, I, I know I'm a roundabout sort of way. Um, his 
saying that Ulysses was really not named after Ulysses S. Grant, but was really named after Ulysses, you know, the mythical figure mm -hmm. because of his journey, because of his hardships, because of like, of course, this is like Ulysses in the flesh. Now, part of, I think, Ulysses' inclusion is, yes, to talk about the Black experience, to talk about the veteran experience, to talk about uh, like the tramp experience from like, again, a more definitely idealized even though it's been eight years that he's this is the number eight comes up a lot which I had read <laughs> I know I'm sidetracking but it comes up a lot in this in the book um which I hadn't really noticed until I read a review that mentioned it and then I all I could do was see it everywhere but um so it's been eight years that he's been wandering and um and so it brings one of Billy's figures that he's idolizing his heroes his his from Abernathy's book it brings that into the narrative in a more real way than just we're doing a road trip and there's a map at the beginning of Billy's book there's a map at the beginning of Amor Tolles's book um with the different routes etc um he also adds that extra link to Abacus later on because this is it right abacus goes to follow to to travel with ulysses because this is like a real life kind of hero adventure sort of thing and and it's about the living of the life instead of just the stories it also kind of circles back for me anyway with something that i think a problem that emmett has with abernathy's book that billy's reading right so billy has all like there's a list of all the heroes in alphabetical do you guys remember this? This mm -hmm. is so in in Billy's book, all of the stories are uh, headed by, you know, alpha, in, in alphabetical order told. And one of the things that Emmett has problems with is that like Thomas Edison uh, and Da Vinci are included in this. So you've got real life figures as well as figures from myth, from stories. And he says he thinks that that's um dangerous or like it's silly you know for it and it can be confusing for young readers to then get mixed up and think that then like someone in real life has like these supernatural or extra powers in some way or that it's like decreed from the gods versus um like sort of the true nature of their accomplishments but then that also cycles back into something that sister agnes says um, so Sister Agnes is like kind of the house mother of the orphanage where Duchess um, was left for those two years. And she's it, so everyone meets her when they go back to the orphanage after Duchess causes mayhem with his preserves. And <laughs> and one of the things she points out is the window, the stained glass window that they have in their dining area. And it's um Jesus talking to, with like apostles and children or after Jesus has been raised from the dead in Christian mythology, talking with uh, the apostles and the children. And she points out that in the window, there's a look of skepticism on all the adults faces a little bit because they're like, there must have been some sort of trick here. There must have been some sort of like, what is this? Because we, you know, like he was dead and we were there and there's no skepticism at all on the children's faces. There's this acceptance of the miraculous nature of this idea of, of this resurrection. And that sort of dovetail, like there's, I find that like, I found through rereading it that there are so many ways that it dovetails back into different things that different characters say or perceive or the ways that they see the world. And then this, brings me back to the number eight. So Emmett is eight years old when his mother leaves. Uh, there's eight years between him and Billy. Billy is eight years old at the beginning of, or at, during this story. And something that, this is not mine, this is totally from this review. And I think it was from a reviewer from NPR and it talks about like the figure eight and how like imagine the way that it looks it's always coming and cycling back around like intersecting itself and like part of the journey and I was just like 
that was wild. I read that. And going that. nowhere, actually going nowhere, you know, going back to New York. Well, maybe not know, going from I mean, point A to point B, but this is it. Is that whatever is going from point A to point B, like really all of our stories, we carry our pasts with us, right? There are things that we revisit all the time and we, we will continue to revisit things until we sort of this idea of like until we kind of get it right or figure something out. And also this journey that this journey, like it comes back again at this intersection before, like it ends in a similar way, the same place that it began, which is Billy and Emmett heading to California. That's where the story kind of starts, right? Yeah. Did I, did I lose any of you? Oh, that make, I didn't oh, realize really about the number you have to read all this at least three times to get. You have to, you're right. You have to. Okay. I, I no, have to go back and read it again. Maybe twice already. I yes. mean, I find it just a bit overwhelming, you know, and to pick up these little things. As I say, I loved his wit. I loved his writing. I, I really loved the way he writes. I loved the, the comical things that are in there because some stuff is really funny. And I I love his moral, you know, all these things he gives you, you know, moral outlooks. And, you know, I mean, my my favorite character was actually Duchess because he was so, you know, it was just so real and so with it. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do, finished. But I mean, you, uh, this is what I told you when I, when I sent the email, it has to be read again. But I found it too long and I found too, yeah, I found it too long and I found too many characters in there, too many. you know? And then the, this switch all the time to just move it forward and keep your attention. You know, you end up with one character and then the next one comes up and something isn't finished on the previous one. I found that very confusing. Mm. My favorite character was Wooly. And his sister, the way his, that was so heartwarming, the way his sister, you know, loved him and related to him and realized that that was such a heartwarming part of the, of the book that, that I know the relationship between Emmett and Billy was also a wonderful relationship, but, but Wooly and his sister really said a lot, and, you know, and there was her husband, the opposite, you know, that Dennis. Sounds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That I found very heartwarming. That was very heartwarming. And then again, talking about, you know, mental, you know, what bipolar, whatever he, it was, he, he was bipolar. He was on a lot of medication. I think he was bipolar. I don't know. Well, I think he was on heroin. Oh, he was on drugs. I think that yeah. was his medicine that he yeah, but had been getting. Because he was bipolar, I think. And maybe in those days, they didn't have that same medication, you know. He took heroin maybe to make, I don't know, it's hard to, you know, why was he, he was on heroin, but he still was, had issues. Yeah, def, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's um, coming back to circling back again, talking about Carol had mentioned the ending to come back to the ending. So at the end of the book, stop listening now if you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the book, uh, so they are at Wooly's family's cottage or camp in the Adirondacks uh, looking to recoup uh, the money that is uh, found in in Wooly's trust that Dennis will not release to him because he's not fit. And after having his one-of-a-kind day, um, Wooly kills himself. And then... They get the money, um, Emmett and, well, Duchess and Billy get the money from the safe. And <clears throat> there is, well, there was an altercation before they get the money. And then um, Duchess is knocked out, put in a boat and mm -hmm. sent out with the money, with his share of the money, he's sent out in a boat a leaky boat, but it's weighted down so that the hole on the one side is like, he'll be fine. He just has to row back kind of slowly in order to 
get back to land in theory. And he this didn't is, know how to swim. He didn't know right. how to swim. He didn't know how to swim, which is something that came up way earlier in the novel, right? That's uh, and that Billy figures out, right? Mm -hmm. Um, on one of uh one of the exoduses from the detention center, when um when <clears throat> Duchess had convinced one other inmate to go with him to the movies to sneak out to go to the movies but it had been raining and so the water is high so he doesn't go and then ends up getting um the other inmate caught which is of course part of mm -hmm. duchess's form like this is it looking at different people's moralities and all of this is really interesting too right so duchess's settling of scores um but that's when Billy says, oh, I feel bad for Duchess because he probably didn't know how to swim. And that mm -hmm. brings it back into light when every time Duchess is given something to read, to do, he's always like, oh, no, be reading in the car hurts my stomach. Oh, no, this it's like these Billy, like these the different things illustrate Billy's perceptiveness. And and they bring these tiny little building blocks to these different characters to help build them into us having a better understanding of who they are that they might not even necessarily be understanding during their narratives, but it gives us more depth to their understanding. Um, so the ending, yes. And then uh, what ends up happening is that a wind comes up <clears throat> and uh, the money starts blowing away. Duchess panics a little bit, moves to the front of the boat and that's when it starts taking on water and he dies. I have to say second time reading it and like I knew Willie was gonna die still cried I still cried when that <laughs> happened I knew Emmett was good or not Emmett I knew Duchess was gonna die I cried <laughs> like I felt all the feelings for these characters like I was I was definitely just sucked right in um entirely again did we think that there was going to be money did you think there was going to be I, money? That's a good point, Carol. I didn't think there would be. I, I was think shocked. There was going to be money either. Yes. Uh, I really was found, yeah. It was uh I was shocked when he opened well, when he opened I mean the fact that he yeah. was able to open the the safe of course, but yeah. the fact that the money was there shocked me. I didn't expect yeah, that at all. Well, I but love Wally, that circumventing of expectations of readers expectations, right? Because But Wally was but Wally was a, um except for his big problem he was he was a car he was a he was not the same as duchess duchess that's why duchess was a violent and and uh and very not like out for himself only that was it he had no yeah, but, yeah, but, he, but you know what some but you know what duchess was very he gave everybody their share he didn't steal the money and run that 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 shocked me too. He had some sort of integrity. He knew he had to pay Emmett back all the expenses, and he divided up the money and gave it to them. He didn't have to do that. That was the prize. That that's a prize. Yeah, that was he, surprising well, he, too. he gave away the car. He gave away the car. He gave away the yeah. car. Just had yeah. he gave away the car. That's not normal. That's not a nice thing to do. I don't believe you know he he had some sort of. The money, I really thought there was money because Wooly was was rich and he knew he was there was nothing he said that wasn't a lie, that wasn't true. Was I, very, disagree. Very, I disagree, but go ahead, Carol. The Duchess, he had a lot of compassion for people. Look at how he was with Billy, how he was with Wooly. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. he, he was a kind man under his bad upbringing and all his That's problems. True. I agree so, with you about so that. Good he hit care by with a, with a two by four, but just because he said something to uh, to uh, Emmett. I mean, he yeah, went, see, and I, I was sort of like all of, I again, like it's different characters, um, perspectives on morality. And like he says before he hits the cowboy with the two by four, um, like he, he didn't start off with being like, I'm going to hit this guy. But he also says like, I'd never hit anyone before in my life. Like, yeah. I don't see him as a violent character at all. I see him as like, again, it's this, it's the, the weights and measures, it's the balances. So like, this is all about settlings of accounts. So when he mm -hmm. first approaches, for example, the cowboy, he's like, you know, I'm just coming to give you some advice, whatever. And the cowboy is just like walking. He's just like, 
you're going to thank me for this one day. <laughs> it's like everything's just sort of happenstance and what presents itself. Like he's definitely an agent of chaos, but I don't see him as bad at all. I agree. And I agree with Carol that like with his, the way he is with Wooly and it is a lot of it is in protection of Wooly. Like he feels protective of Wooly. It's just that they are Wonder coming why. from, I don't think it's just because of the money. No, but they were in jail together. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never yeah, thought it was because of the money either. I, I found Dutch is just very complicated as a person, but mm -hmm. thinking of what he had to live through with his father and stuff, you know, he couldn't expect anything better. And he was, like you say, he was a kind, really a kind kind of guy. And I also think he had a temper, you know? Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, with the cowboy and mm -hmm. but even that it doesn't seem like it was done out of anger it wasn't no. like out of a it was just a like hmm. action well, that didn't work this is what's next <laughs> yeah like, he gave to away the car but he asked somebody to car. Get I mean, that was the worst he gave I away like that it. car that was their way of getting around they gave it away to me that is not kind just but it's sort it of like i feel like I feel partly like this discussion here that we're having here about Duchess is like another obviously era and perspective of it, but like looking at the discussion that happens again in in small in uh with the nuns at the at the orphanage, right? So when they stop at the orphanage in Lewis, um and it's again, like, it's not planned. Nothing with Duchess seems particularly planned <laughs> other than, again, the idea of opening the restaurant, right? But like, nothing seems really planned. He does it, he just sort of goes with what's presenting. So like, they end up on the Lincoln Highway. He wasn't expecting that. And then they end up passing by Lewis. Billy points it out. And then he's like, oh, actually, do you mind if we stop by? Off they go. He's like, I'm just going to go in for a minute. And he locks the nuns all in their rooms with chairs <laughs> and gives the orphans Damn. all of Sally's preserves Damn. because he's just like, isn't, wouldn't this be wonderful? Right. And then off he goes. Emmett comes up to clean up the mess. Right. And it lets the nuns out. And one of the nuns is like, when she finds out it was Duchess, she's like, see, I knew that never do good to that ne'er do well whatever would come back and sister agnes like goes one step beyond she's like but what did he come for and it's like why were there all these spoons and all of this and it's the preserves she's like he did it as an act of charity as an act of kindness this is something like and he didn't hurt anybody this is it like i feel like with duchess i mean i can't say that i would act the same in those circumstances but at the same time like i'm like he doesn't do anything bad to anyone who didn't have kind of it coming to them like he is like he's like a physical embodiment of karma <laughs> like, didn't he actually ask somebody to hit him he deserved he did something terrible to him yeah he stood there and he said i want you to hit me because i deserve it so I yeah that. the inmate yeah. who uh, oh my gosh I forgot his name it's not trustworthy yeah. um but the the inmate who was Emmett's bunkmate who's the one who ended mm -hmm. up getting caught and this was again so the guy who he hits on the head with a frying pan is the old warden right so the old warden had this very severe form of punishment where he said mm -hmm. like oh well black inmates don't learn as well as white and they have a harder time learning so they have to have twice the punishment so you can either have your punishment in work time or in lashes and so whereas for this impromptu outing duchess receives you know like four weeks of hard work detail then this other guy gets eight lashes right. in front of everybody and, and he blames so himself. this is something that again it's his weighing of accounts it's mm -hmm. how he sees how to balance the scales. Tell like me, he doesn't does, see himself as blameless. Sorry. On another topic, I'm sorry to change it before I forget. Do we care that they didn't uh, tie this up and they found their mother? Who cares if they got to California or not? Did we really? Oh, I do. I wanted <laughs> it all to end up beautifully. <laughs> uh, I wanted her to be there with open arms, you know. Yeah, I really I did. did. Oh, I just <laughs> so much. And there was one line in the book 
that I can't quote exactly. I think I told Katie uh, when Wooly said, is this going to be another day, another day? Like the same An old- every day kind of day or something like yeah, that. Like that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's made me change some of my way of doing things. Like I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is, you know, whatever. I've switched it around just because it's true. All of our days, especially since COVID, we do the same thing every day, you know, and and so I've switched things around. As a result, I forget to do certain things because it's it's no longer in my make your bed. But I love, so you you got the quote better than I did. I can't remember what the quote was, Katie. What did you it's just? Like, it's like an everyday kind of day. I'm gonna try. I I think I remember I the. Ch- you yeah, guys yeah. continue talking. I'm gonna see if I can find it in the book. I just loved it. I just keep saying it's another Hello. day. I, yeah. Hi. Okay, how are you? Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to mute you, okay, Rose? Oh, she muted herself. Yeah, so there's the everyday kind of day, and then there's the one of a kind. What would be wonderful, right, is this one of a kind day. But this is, and that comes back again with from different characters' perspectives. Like Duchess, when he's talking about Selena, the, the detention center, to Billy, he says, you know what the problem is about it? is that it's you all you wake up with the same people you do the same things you sit at the same table with the same faces you do the same things and it's just like again it's this like wash rinse repeat sort of life where there's nothing unexpected there's nothing and that can be really wearing and that's and it comes up from duchess again when he talks about like the way that most people live their lives this sort of way. I think that, I mean, Carol, I know that you brought it up in terms of COVID, but I think that it's, um, this is, this is just kind of adulthood for a lot of people. It's just like, this is what we do. And we don't, like, we have to have that sort of push to say yes to the unexpected, to just be like, yeah, why, why do I have to do all of it? Yeah. And so maybe, yeah, maybe you forgot to, you know, put the laundry in the dryer or whatever. But then like maybe instead, but why did, why did that happen? It's like, is it because, you know, someone, a friend was passing through said that they were on their way to, you know, Prince Edward Island. And did you want to come with? And you said, yeah. (laughs) I'll go. Like this is sometimes we don't say yes to things because of other responsibilities. Don't get me wrong. I think responsibilities are necessary. And we have, like that's why they're called responsibilities. But again, and this comes back to with Sally, right? Why she does the things that she does out of kindness. It's just like, you don't have to do them. That's what makes life worth living is doing the things you don't have to do. When you find yourself trapped in, because Sally's in that, Duchess is in it. Like so many of the different characters are in this, this sort of reality where like they're doing the things that they have to do just one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's when they do the extra things or the unexpected things, that's where the, like Abernathy says, right? The life that's worth living sort of comes comes into it. Did Sally leave because she wanted to leave her life that she was like so the drudgery and taking care of her father? Or did she really have feelings for Emmett? Like at the end, she sort of like slush, fluffed off the feelings for Emmett. You know, like I'm, he said, don't take, you know, he mentioned something about not, she shouldn't get so involved with him. Or he was like kind of worried about that. And she said, it's not you, you know, it's just to get away. What did you, what, what did you get out of that? Well, I mean, obviously I have a perspective as I do with all the things, but so I'm going to, I'm going to pass it to Carol and Heidi to see if they have perspectives on it first before I railroad everyone again. Well, I think she really wanted to get away. I don't Mm -hmm. think she has feelings for Emmett. I think she just is very kind. Like you say, you know, she, she did all this stuff for Billy and for the other family, because you know, that's the way, especially if you live on a farm and people are in trouble, that's what you do. But she wants now her own way. She, I mean, I think she really meant it when she says, forget about it. I want my own life. I'm gonna. Oh, I think she was more resentful than kind. 
I, I don't, I wouldn't put the word kind. I would put like, like drudgery, like she had to do with it. And then she finally- I know, and she was it. fed up with that. I really- That's right, that's right. She if really she was kind, I think she would have stayed there. Because all her life she has been working on the farm. She has been working her for, for her father. Right. Then when the neighbor's lady, when, you know, the, the, the mother of Billy left, she took care of the other family in a way too. And she's mm -hmm. just fed up with it. And I can really understand that. Positively, I can understand. Luckily, I'm one of those persons, if somebody knocks on my door and says, do you want to come to Prince Edward Island? I say, okay, I just stick my stuff in the bag and we go. Except, you know, I'm constantly stuck with COVID. It is the third time I've had it. Oh, really? Wow. And I'm so fed up. Yeah. I, that's what I feel about Sally. I loved her. Because she just took off and, took off and left. This is okay. Yeah. I get to San Francisco and then I'm on my own. Carol, Roseanne, do you guys have feelings on Sally? Was she in love with Emmett? Was she resentful? Was she? I think she was in love with him, but she realized as she went on this trip that this was not, this was a, a dead end, another dead in, end in her life. And mm -hmm. she decided it was time. She was young. It was time to move on. It's a hard decision to make, but. Uh, she went on her adventure and uh, just like they did everybody had an adventure in this book and mm. here was another adventure but she was kind and I think uh, I think I think it was Emmett I think Emmett what? was the one who Emmett was yeah. he realized you know he has he hasn't he hasn't lived yet you know Not he right. hasn't lived he, he wasn't love. interested he, he had, had no future with he, him he, he, he held back he 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 even if he liked, if he loved her or liked her, and he knew exactly what she wanted, he just no, that's not what he wanted in life. He wanted to get his mm -hmm. own life together before mm -hmm. he wanted to take somebody else's at, on. At eighteen, yeah, yeah. He's only 18. in nineteen fifty four though too, right? But yeah, I my perspective, which I will share, is. No. Um, <laughs> okay. that's what we want we want that <laughs> um, employee of the month let's hear what exactly the employee of the month has to give us her the employee of the month with the biggest mouth <laughs> that's what the next one should be <laughs> i'd win every month um yes. <laughs> my perspective is that i think that sally was very very pragmatic uh, that's not to say that she wasn't kind. I think she was also very kind. I would use the word kind. Um, I think the way that she demonstrated her kindness was a very kind of more traditionally Midwestern sort of way and that it wasn't like, oh, let me help you do this. It's just she kind of did the things and showed her love and in different ways. I think that she wasn't expecting anything from Emmett after he went to prison or to the detention center, because I, I think that that wasn't even a factor in it for her. I think that she definitely loved Billy quite a lot. But I also think that her, any resentment that she had, to my mind, this is my read on her, was directed much more like towards the drudgery part of taking care of her father. And that, because like she says in the, one of the earliest, <clears throat> I think it's probably her first point of view she talks about how um her sister her older sister had the good sense to get married and move away <laughs> so that she couldn't <laughs> but I think that Sally also twigs in to this idea that actually being married would involve the same things as it does right. with her father but then with someone else and this in a way this like being ripped out of her life or like <clears throat> through this road trip etc or her parts in it too actually gives her that open door to say like wait a minute why do I have to go back why do I have to it's just like I can actually make my own life for me that's so it's also kind of a precursor to like um furthering like the women's movement like that happens in American society a little bit later so I didn't I didn't think that she was um I thought she was a lot more than than just romantically interested in Emmett I think that um, 
one of the things that that played on her storyline was how Emmett still only saw her as that's why she would be doing mm. these things. And it's like, no, it's not about you. This is about me. And this is, and part of it, this is about me is that like, yes, I'm there for my neighbors. I'm there for my friends. I'm there for my family in the same way that I give them preserves. Of course, I'm going to come with, my, with Betty. She's a terrible driver though. Right. Like, <laughs> like I'm going to come, <laughs> I'm going to come with Betty and help wherever I need help, wherever, whatever needs helping, whatever needs doing. Um, but I think that it was this kind of uh, like an ah moment a little bit for her of, of being like, and I can now choose my own path. I don't need fifty thousand dollars to choose it. I just have to choose it. Well, she was like a homestead mother. You know, I mean, this is what when you live in a farm, you help out. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I just felt that she was um, doing what was. She wasn't doing it because it was expected <laughs> of her, but it was part of her you know she took care of her father she took care of people who were in need it it was homesteading you know she made the preserves and she you know I, yeah but I think that some of it was um like the beholdenness the like it was that this is because this is what I have to do right like she had to do certain things and was kind of like forced to do certain things because of expectations again on That's right. like the unmarried daughter, the, you know, living on the farm, et cetera. But I think that all of those extra things, like, so there's that chapter where she talks about like, uh, after, I think it's after Emmett is somewhat dismissive of the preserves. He's like, we have jam sort of thing. I know he isn't really dismissive, but that's how she takes it, right? She's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I do things the long way, the hard way, the, and, and how appreciative Duchess is of it, which is why he gets all of the preserves, right? It's just, just like the reason she does things that way is that's the love. That's the kindness. That's the extra. And it's like, she doesn't do it because she has to. That's why it's kindness. What do you think about the author doing a sequel to this? I mean, it is so obvious what happens to them. I, well, it, th there could be such a wonderful story about, you know, a continuation of part two. Is this author? He's not the author that's going to do that, right? I'd like to know about a little bit about um, A Gentleman in Moscow. What would you like to know about A Gentleman in Moscow? I, I just tell him, is it? I think I may have you not read it, Rona? I maybe I did, but I don't remember. Is it about a, a married couple living in? No, no. So I don't think I, I'm going to read it. What, just give me a brief, 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 if everybody doesn't mind, for two seconds. Okay, so I read that one longer ago than this one, so my my synopsis will be even more flawed. <laughs> but, um, so it follows uh, one character who's under house arrest in a fancy hotel in Moscow. Um, for like 32, 33 years. Oh. And it's told in the third person, if I'm not mistaken. And it's, so the structures of the book. So uh, his, okay, so MR Tolls' his first book is called Rules of Civility. And it takes place over one year, one calendar year from like New Year's Eve, I think, to New Year's Eve. The second book, Gentleman in Moscow, takes place over a huge stretch of time, encompasses a whole lot of kind of global events that are happening, but it's all pretty much from one person's perspective and his, um, and, and like the people that he comes into contact with and everything, but it's all like, he's like, there's no question of who the main character of A Gentleman in Moscow is, it's him. But the structure of that book is it sort of works, um, like it's like a countdown, it goes to a middle part and then it goes up again or else, yeah. So it, it's it's kind of like an accordion time-wise. And this one is structured as a countdown. Do, 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 do. Um, the first one, again, told mainly from one person's perspective. This one told from multiple perspectives over a really short period of time. So I found a gentleman in Moscow uh, like it has, it's similar to, like all three books have similarities in that they're sort of rooted in historical events, but with, and sometimes they have like real people in, incorporated into the narrative, but they're not necessarily 
things that those real people did, those real historical figures did or said, or mm -hmm. in places where they were at. Um, but it's another big book. But it, I mean, so that's, I think, Heidi, you said, like, to plow through it again. So I haven't found any of his books plowing through ours. Um, well, but no, that's... not The Gentleman in Moscow. And Gentleman in Moscow, I would love to read again because I really loved it. Mm -hmm. But oh, I lived okay. through this era. Mm -hmm. You know, I even remember when Khrushchev was in Vienna and his and he brought his wife, which was basically a peasant, and she peeled an apple for Kennedy. You know, they met in, in Vienna, mm -hmm. and she peeled an apple for, for Kennedy. And it was so, I said, well, you know, a farm, a farm <laughs> person, and Khrushchev was, and all the others. I mean, I remember all of them. This is the time, you know, I was born in 38, and this is the time I lived through. Mm -hmm. So that was one reason. But I just loved the way the book was constructed, you know. He was... He was an aristocrat, and because of that, he was jailed in a way, but in a hotel. And, you know, he moved from being in this fancy place in the hotel, and they cut it down and cut it down and he, until he was sitting up in the attic. And I just found it, I found it very real. Yeah. And, you know, I just, for me, it was, I, I love that book. And I, I will read that again, mainly because I want to I'm read, gonna read it. I'm so gonna this read is it. it. The main character in Gentleman in Moscow is an aristocrat. And so instead of being put to death, which is the fate of some of his yeah. compatriots at the, uh, after the revolution, um, he, there are mitigating circumstances for him. And there are people who are like, um, like championing him that he shouldn't be killed because he also stood up for the working man in these different ways. So instead of being killed, he is under house arrest in a very fancy hotel where then he ends up working, right? He ends up instead of like, uh, like he, he, he ends up being well, like the, he has to work in the, in the kitchen and the, you know, because he gets reduced to nothing. <laughs> By the authorities, in a way. But at and, the same time, he never gets reduced to nothing, right? That's another sort of I thing in the book, is that while so much can be taken away, it doesn't erode who he is. Like, he stays, exactly. like, very true to himself and throughout the... And even when he's there, he helps people. Mm. You know, these, these characters come in. And I just found... I also found the construction better than this book. I just found it was... To it was here and there and everywhere. And mind you, I haven't been well. So, you know, and I'm reading at night, you know, and my eyes are not so good anymore. And I thought, oh God, this is never ending. While well, the gentleman in Moscow, I couldn't put down. Mm. Well, I must read that. That sounds good. Um, for those of you who are interested, there are some Easter eggs. Um, so-called in this book in the Lincoln Highway. So an Easter egg is like kind of like a hidden like mm -hmm. present. I think it's from I think it's from gamer speak, but I'm not a gamer, so I don't really know. But um, in the Lincoln Highway, um, Wooly is actually the nephew of one of the characters from Rules of Civility. Oh. And also, I believe that it ends uh, in June 1954. And I think that's when the action in A Gentleman in Moscow also ends. I can't remember if it's like the exact day, the same day as well. But there are these like little. 54? I think so. Yeah. Maybe 56. No, I think it was 54. I think so. Oh, well, in the book, in Lincoln Highway, it's definitely 54. And yeah, I, yeah. No, I'm no, pretty... I'm talking about the gentleman... Gentleman in Moscow? You think it ends in 56? I, politically, it would have made more sense, but I, I'm not sure. I, I don't, you know, I read hmm. it two years ago. So I'm not sure. But I love it. But it's neat, these little, again, ways that things dovetail. I think that we won't be able to expect another book from Amar Tolls until, by my math, 2026. 
so there's no sequel coming up. <laughs> I don't think that there's going to be a sequel. I think that um, part of the, it's this open-endedness, right? This, um, oh, Carol Blank just, just wrote, she said her phone died. So she's, oh. <laughs> that's why she disappeared. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, about whether or not they find the mother. And I mean, I like that it's left up to our imagination. I I like that, again, like Billy is sort of prescient with these like different ideas of like who Ulysses is, that Duchess can't swim, that, um, you know, these different little things he seems to have like a little, you know, a finger on the pulse, we'll say. And so that to me is interesting in terms of like, whereas in the same way that there's money in the safe, right? There's money in the safe with the, um, when they get to the Adirondacks, it's that it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up finding the mom. But I also think that it's the, the happy ever after for Billy and Emmett is that this, in a way they can, they can start making their own everyday kind of days. Like, after this like sort of tumultuous 10 day mm -hmm. period road trip. Now they're going to go like it's their happy ever after to me is them reaching California and then starting Emmett's very mm -hmm. practical dream of flipping houses. Mm -hmm. And you think he would write a book on that? I don't think so. No, I think mm -hmm. uh, from what I read, uh, the way that like, well, I, I definitely, from what I read, it's that like he, he has MR Tolls has like all these different sort of ideas of different stories. Um, and the reason why he chooses to write one, like in whatever order is because of the difference, like something different from before, because it's a challenge. And it, so like, um, while they all do seem to be set ish, like in a similar time frame, their locations, the people that they focus on the, uh, the structures of the books are all very different. So he said that like with most of his ideas, story ideas, he can remember the exact like moment that he had the idea for like the inception of the book. And with Lincoln Highway, he's not sure where that came from. But one of the reasons why he chose this story after A Gentleman in Moscow to focus on was again, like Gentleman in Moscow takes place, like it's European uh this one's american even though rules of civility was american as well um gentleman in moscow one person long stretch of time lincoln highway multiple characters even though initially he thought it would only be two um over a very short period of time like from the beginning he thought that he would do it over like a 10-day period how old is he uh, uh Kay, that he only this is his third book oh um, that's a good question i don't I don't know. <laughs> he's, I can look it up. I get. I'd say like fifties, sixties. He's in his fifties or sixties. Why does somebody so brilliant, such a brilliant writer, why would he only start to write like later in life? Well, because he had a career. I, I did a talk on Gentlemen in Moscow not that long ago, but I have a really terrible memory, and mm -hmm. I had written down a lot more of the author information then, and I didn't write much down this oh. time, so I'm not going to recall properly. I think he was in finance i oh, think i could I, look it up i guess on i mean Google. that's what i should do right now is <laughs> is look it up and not have it posted on youtube <laughs> afterwards <laughs> me being like um i think he was a hockey player <laughs> like, <laughs> he played professional hockey that's what he did no um because i also have somewhere in my mind that i feel like maybe he taught but i don't I don't know. I think that he was in finance and he just always was really interested in literature. Mm. Um, and then with all the references he makes to mythology and stuff, because <laughs> you see, I was reading this book and I thought, oh my God, I got to look this up and see how that went. And oh my God, I have to look this up. And, see. and eventually it drove me crazy. I said, well, I have so much homework to do. On this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. it, it, it was taxing in many ways to read it, I found. Well, this is sort of one of those things. I think that you can 
choose to read it in different ways. Like you can like the, you can go down the rabbit hole of all the different little paths that are sort of like you see signposts, right? Like you can turn down this road and look, look into like, uh, uh, like Sinbad's adventures and look into Zorro's adventures and look into, um, and you can also just sort of let all of that kind of wash over you and just take what is Excuse told. Me, I think somebody at the door. Mm. Well, I think that actually we'll probably be wrapping up. Yeah, it was great. Just great. What's next? What's next? Next. Next is going to be a read what you want book club. That's next month. And then December will be a book club book, like a traditional one, which okay. is chosen already. It's going to be How the Penguin Saved Veronica. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. So the dates are on the, the library's website on in programs. And... Yeah, next time we just get to all talk about well, no sp or fewer spoilers anyway. <laughs> to read what you want, we'll talk about uh, just what what we've been reading and are interested in. So, Katie, no homework this no homework this month. Homework next month. <laughs> okay. How the penguin saved Veronica. Whoops. Yeah, I will be happy to read again. It's okay. a delightful, delightful book. What's the title again? How the Penguin or just the Penguin? How the Penguins Saved Veronica. <laughs> so that's our next, okay. But that's in December. Okay. And, uh, and Fred Roseanne is still here. It's about a, an older Roseanne woman. is not still here. She's out, okay. but she might watch the end of it. Okay. And for anyone else who may be seeing this on YouTube, mm -hmm. today is October 18th. And mm -hmm. on the 21st, on Saturday at the library, there will be not only our annual book sale that will be starting, but there will be a jewelry sale, which our dear Carol will be which attending. Is, is that this Saturday? This yes. Saturday? This Saturday. Okay. What so time to what time, Carol? 12 to 4. 12 till 4. So 12 to 4, then Carol and her comrades will be you're there with me jewelry. a lot of money, Carol. Carol, you're costing me a lot of money. This is <laughs> yeah, right. You, yeah, right. Yeah, you got bargains, let me tell you. But thanks for your support. Also, the Cats Committee is having a bake sale. And the so Cats Committee and having, thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So for anyone watching on YouTube, oh, it's 2023 too. So if you're watching this in the future, <laughs> don't show up at the library. Right, it's good point. I'm expecting baked goods necessarily or jewelry. <laughs> Katie, are you going to stop the recording? Because I just want to talk to you about something. I'm not on the recording. I will do. So I'm going to say thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And now thank I will you. stop the recording. <laughs>